First of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It's for me an honor to be here today sharing with you what one of the European institutions is doing on this wall of the digital transformation. So I never expected to have been invited to such an event like this one, hmm? talking about semantic interoperability and being here being the European Code of Auditors. And I think it's the same for you. I mean, what an institution like auditing is just here talking with or sharing something with us. That's why I wanted to start by explaining to you so the European Court of Auditors is one of the European institutions. Hmm? It's the external auditor, while the, we have the political direction that is the European Council and the Parliament and we have the legislative. We also have an auditor, an audit role, and the external auditor is the European Court of Auditors. The European Court of Auditors works, this is a very simplified process, uh, auditing European funds, where there is, there is a lot of uh, funding on different programs and, develop, and, and areas. So we need to audit that. So the process starts really within the executive, that is the European Commission. European Commission is distributing money in Europe, but not only Europe, all around the world. And through member states, the money arrives to, let's say, citizens, citizens that we call them beneficiaries. And then time after, the European Court of Auditors goes and try to audit and, and, and see whether the process uh, it was well managed or not well managed, or what, what are the errors, what are the risks, what are the problematic in this process. Mm? That's one of the, of the major uh, outputs of the, of the institution, but we need to know that the institution is also doing another one, that is the evaluation of policy. So one of the activities is just related really to money, but the other one is about policy, uh, and then we need to evaluate whether the implementation is going the right way or not. So, as you can imagine, at the Court of Auditors is a big machine of information acquisition and exchange. In order to do policy evaluation and in order to identify risk, in order to find errors, in order to, we need a lot of data. We need data from the programming to the follow-up of our recommendations. And we are not a data producer. That's the first thing. We don't produce. We produce very, very little. But all we do is ju ju judgmental. It's based on information produced by others. So you name it, we have to use it. Open data portal, of course, we are using. Media monitoring instruments and tools, we need to add them when we are evaluating policies. As I said, it's a big machine processing information. As you know, the Tallinn Declaration that has been already mentioned here on in government pushed the different uh, member states of Europe towards a digitalization and a strong effort on the digitalization. And that, again, adds new risks because in that digitalization process, a lot of budget, as you can imagine, is going to be invested. And then it's work again for the auditors because they need, they need to guarantee that coordination is there, interoperability is there, common architecture, data quality, data veracity. So this is another very important aspect that uh, shake a bit the role of the auditors in the picture. The impact of this, 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 this digitalization is working in the, around the world in audit is that, that the world being digital makes, and the e-government, as I explained, makes that the evidence for the auditor is digital. It's not anymore the invoice, it's not anymore a piece of paper. If the, the, if the evidence is digital, means that the presence of the auditor anywhere around the world is also digital. But not only that, the controls we are uh, performing can be also be digital. And what is very, very important for us is that now, that is different from 10 years ago, for example, the technology that will allow us to work is already available and is accessible. Now we can talk about natural language processing, we can talk about artificial intelligence type of tools, and they are there for all of us. While the, the technology was already there many, many, 50 years ago, it's nothing new, but it was not accessible. So our vision is to, be, to move towards what is continuous and predictive audit, risk analysis of the full population and not just a sample, process all available information so we can just identify errors and we can find all the problems of today. Our ambition is to automate the audit and as a consequence be able to do it with fewer resources but also making fewer human errors. And 
as I said, with this e-government to contribute to a more transparent Europe. So what happened inside the organization? So in the, during the year 2018 and 2019, there was a big task for on foresight for the ECA. The foresight analyzed anything that can happen and was looking for, for the future and has identified as a priority the digital transformation of the financial and compliance audit. That is an enormous step forward for an organization like a, 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 court, a, a court of auditors, because those organizations traditionally, as you can imagine, they, they are not the ones that are in the top of the technology. They are not the first one innovating. Hmm? And so it, the, the, something, something from the deck, deck the documents is a decision of the court, is that we should urgently install a digital transformation of our financial and compliance audit. And a dedicated digital steering committee should drive, drive the digital transformation. And the digital steering committee consists of four members. That for us is, is a big thing. It's a big thing because the ambition of the court of auditors is to build trust, to build trust in Europe, hmm? is, uh, to build trust in all the systems. And that is another aspect that is very important. It's not about you know, the, the threat is not only going to come from trusting the accounts and saying that things that we can validate that things were performed without errors, no fraud, no corruption, no all those things. It's much more important. I mean, audit per se is building trust. And the first thing we need to build trust is on those information systems that are providing us that information. And here I'm talking about building information system, validating and guaranteeing the veracity. Again, an enormous uh, field to, to, to invest in audit and an enormous thing to do because we need to guarantee and trust the system that is going to be digital and digitalized. Huh? And we all know, you don't need me to tell you, how easy is uh, to, 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 to hack a system, how difficult it is to guarantee that it's really, really the, the, the right information. So the ABCD of digital audit, we coined that term called digital audit, and this is just for marketing. I mean, I was in a conference and I saw that was a very good, and I'm now reusing this slide in all my conferences, but it's not mine. The ABCD of digital audit is about A for artificial intelligence, B for blockchain, C for cybersecurity and D for data analytics. And that gives you already the idea of what we are talking about here. So already in 2017, having this idea in mind that we need to move forward with digitalization of the audit function, and, yes, and before, at the high level of the court, we have this decision on digital audit, we have already for the IT department on the IT master plan 2018-2020 that we, we established four goals. The first one was technology for audit, for audit and was digital audit as the ultimate goal. We were already aware of that in 2017. Then the second one is about connecting with our stakeholders the, and being the citizens one of them. Then tra the transformation of the way we work, the way we look inside and we need to transform how we are producing everything, how do we do things to be more productive and to collaborate. And the last one was about IT function, the reinventing IT with the cloud, with all those things. I mean, we need to recruit different type of people. We have different functions. We need to be more business process analysis oriented than maybe technical people. I don't know. Those things, and we need new models of governance. I mean, if we are experimenting, we are things that we are not, this sometimes on by the scope that we are using for project management, maybe it's not anymore valid. I don't know. That was all about this. But for today, the first one, the first goal, the one of the digitalization of the audit is the one we are going to develop a bit. It was divided on three objectives. The first one is about automation. It's automate the full audit life cycle and reduce the audit work. Hmm? The second one is to support new services with that, with, with that analysis, to produce data services, to, pro, to support new products, I'm sorry. And the third and very important one is this one about building trust and not only on the finance, but also on the systems themselves, and there was the auditing IT. Let's develop a bit on the first one. When we are talking about audit automation, we are referring to two different realities. The first one is the autom automation of the audit documentation process. Here is what I was saying, you know, the, the, we, we can, and there are two things that are similar but a bit different, and they all contribute to the same. We wanted to have a single process for all information exchange, but imagine how difficult it is 
What we have on the other part is any beneficiary around Europe, and if I can say even any beneficiary around the world, anybody that receives money from Europe is susceptible to be part of the process. Then we need to, the mission is to automate this, and that is when um, we have an idea already uh, in 2018 of using blockchain, because you can imagine an auditor that arrives to a beneficiary one year and a half after and start asking for the documentation, and then the beneficiary doesn't know anymore, and then yes, it will get you for, uh, finance because you wanted to promote things in China, what did you do? Well, I don't know, we, we have a brochure. Uh, it's not, we thought no, we need to make, even, to think about instruments that will help that beneficiary that uh, then is a European citizen. So since the beginning, they can already uh, provide us with the information we need. And we did a prototype in blockchain and it's about building what we call the control by design. And another aspect is the automation of the activities of the auditor. Of course, the auditors, they do many, a lot of, uh, uh, there are two circumstances here. Either you receive the full data set and then everything is easy, but in most of the cases, the most you get is a username and password, go to the system, do whatever you want. And in that case, we need to implement robotic process automation in order to avoid these repetitive tasks that can be done by the machine instead of the auditor. Hmm? So as I said, we did this prototype in blockchain, um, using public blockchain. We are registering in the blockchain only the metadata, so we have to identify what were the metadata associated to the process. Is GDPR compliant? And uh, now the initiative is within the European Blockchain Services Infrastructure, and we are working in an, we need instant institutional cooperation. I think that's the key word for me today and the key message since now. Alone we do nothing. I mean, first of all, as I was saying, we are not the one distributing the force. We are not at the beginning of the process. At the beginning of the process, we have, let's say, if we are talking about cohesion funds, we have DG Radio. And DG Radio is the one we need to have, to be, must be on board with us. So since the beginning, we, we, we give the, the, the funds, and the funds are going to be controlled using systems. So we are working together with them, together with the DG, the DG, the DG and, and the commission is, okay, uh, along, we know we're going to wear. I will say we just have the idea now to you to implement, and we will benefit at the end of the process. But the idea is that the beneficiary register, and then you have the action coordinator, and you have the regional agency, and you have the EU funds, and then you have the commission, and then you have, and then, that we simplify all those, uh, all these process, and because those beneficiaries are giving the same documentation to any one of them, I mean, to any one of the actors. So, regarding that analytics, we have a, so well, we can work, that was the second act. We have structure and structure information. For us, the structure one is relatively simple. The most difficult one is the unstructured one. You need to understand that just for the declaration of assurance, that is the, the audit of the accounts, with current process, not using full population and nothing, we are processing 300,000 documents. 300,000 documents means that it's not the sample, the one is dictating the quality of our audit. It's the, as I said always, is the number of documents the auditor can read per day. And then you calculate is five. That's why we, the, the size of the, the number of transactions is that one. So for us, it's fundamental to be able to process and structure data. Because what we receive is a bunch of documents, eh? thousands of documents that we need. My predecessor in my, my job told me, you are going to transfer audit Madalena the day the machine will read for you, for the auditors. Because, and now I think the machi machine can read. The machine can do that work for us. And we use that information for policy evaluation, risk analysis, um, fraud detection, etc. So as I said, this number five is not about the quality, it's not fixing, it's not, it's just the number of documents you can process manually. Okay, then one of the things we developed, for example, is a document uh, navigator in which we have, of course, summarization, um, we can select the negative paragraph, positive paragraph, uh, we can do, or so we can uh, assign um, automatically metadata to the different documents we are using the Eurobook. I saw the people from the publications office uh, uh, there, so we are just working together in improving the tool and the instrument because that will simplify a lot the, the, the work of the auditors. Because as you can imagine, all the banks of information that we receive, I understand all the work we are already doing is getting better, but it's still in silos. 
we cannot connect one with the next one. We develop a framework for that analysis that little by little we are implementing. And then the other acts, as I say, is auditing IT. It's all about, in a digital world, the trust in the system will be the base to generate trust. So if we don't trust the system, nothing will happen. And then we need to not only uh, audit the governance of the systems and things that were the traditional, but we need to audit also cybersecurity, maybe one day the algorithms. We need to be ready for that. But we are not there yet. And we are not there yet because that represents an enormous cultural change. It's like a, a, a tremblement de terre. Huh? It's shaking the organization. Because we are talking about risk and allowing for failure. And audit organizations, by definition, they don't want to fail. No, because we cannot do the same errors the people we are auditing do. And then you tell them, but listen, we are not better than them. We, maybe we are even worse. But they, we are not allowed to fail, meaning that it's a very complicated organization. So we need to put a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy in order to move forward. But we have elements that will help us. And I like this model of the pressure. In order to make an organization that is so traditional as the court of auditors to, to change, you need to have pressure. But the pressure needs to come from everywhere in the organization. We have pressure from the top, from the senior manager. You need pressure from the peers, from the rest of the world, and from the employees themselves. How are we feeling that pressure? From the top, I talked to you about the ECA foresight in which digital audit has been recognized as important. For the, from the peers, we are organizing a summer school in Pisa with other uh, supreme audit institutions all around Europe about digital audit. So that is another pressure that we are feeling from, from, from the peers and the organization. Of course, the rest of the world, the auditee, the people we are auditing, they are a progress, making a lot of progress on this digitalization. So we cannot be left behind. If not, we will not be able to audit them. And the last one is the one that is coming bottom up from the organization. If we arrive to have an enthusiastic team in the organization that also needs, we need that also that element in order to put the real pressure. That is what, like when you go to an exam, you need to have a date, a date for the exam. Then is when you really start studying with pressure because you need to be ready for that date. This is the pressure model I'm presenting to you. So in order to put this pressure from the employees, we create something that we call the Ecolab. And the Ecolab started by saying, we, we have a space, and then we said, those auditors having a data problem, having data in their hands, and they want to do one help or, or have some ideas, please come to this space on a Friday morning. And then we say, all people having technical skills or that would like to, to develop or to learn or to have cases so they can play with, all about digitalization, all about data, they can go to this place on a Friday morning. And to our surprise, since the first day, we have both. We have auditors and we have staff that started talking to each other. That's what, how the Ecolab started. We started with cases in 2017, in April, that we couldn't solve. The first one was a very complex on nuclear network knowledge management network. Okay, we didn't know anything about network analysis. Now we know that our colleagues on GRC, they, they have expertise that they could have helped us at that moment. So it's the way it started. And now we have even people full-time dedicated to that. And because now it's a strategic action, we will have more. And what is key is that was always driven by business needs and not by the technology. And that is key. Uh, Gertrude, you mentioned that since the beginning. We share that. Cannot be driven by technology. It's not because we have somebody that is an expert in Python, I don't know what, that you will do nothing. It's not because you, you, dis you start designing architectures for big data analytics and I don't know. No, give me the problem you have that a big data uh, processing will solve, and then things will move. And maybe, in parallel, you have other people thinking about those architectural models. Hmm? So we establish a roadmap. Of course, at the beginning, we start, as I said, with reuse. We saw what do we have already in house. And it's amazing how many people enthusiasts, how many people with ideas, how many people who wants to change you will find in your organizations. We, 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 were list, we list up to 10 people. Some of them were auditors working mid-time with us, mid-time continuing auditing. We, another was a translator that for us was key because we, he was a fan of natural language processing. So he's the one doing now is part full-time of the ECA lab that uh, doing um, 
of course, natural language processing and process mining. So let's see what the organization has already there. Hmm? Now we move not just, we are not in the reuse anymore, we are in the phase of the experiment. It means that we cannot guarantee that, you know, in two months from now you will have this result or in three. We are still investigating, but the important thing is that we, start, we are investigating the improvement to the statement of assurance. For us, it's a big, big step forward because it's the principal product of the European Court of Auditors. Of course, we need to scale. Huh? We need to, it's nothing is, 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 is there yet. We need to scale, we need what, to industrialize. And for that, maybe we need different staff from the one help us to arrive here. Okay, some final remarks. Um, for me, I will skip that because at the end of the story, what we need, because we are small, we are not alone, but in a small organization, the technical staff cannot discuss very much with others. So what we really need in order to move forward is interinstitutional cooperation. For me, that is the key message that I want all of you to take, that what we are doing here is the key because we need to cooperate between member states. We need to cooperate between uh, 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 European institutions and member states. We need to work together among different European institutions because at the end of the process, we are all together contributing to this digital Europe. So that is my last message I quote, as I, I, I have quote Steve Jobs talking about trust because what we want to build together is trust in Europe. Thank you very much. <laughs>